So, let's get this. Well, good morning for those who are here. We are recording this session. So if you can ask your questions at the last part, then I can answer them for, this is for recording purposes. It just makes it easier to understand when you play back. We will play, put it on Blackboard tomorrow. All the recordings will go on Blackboard tomorrow for this week. All right, what I am doing today, I'm starting with chapter one, breezing through chapter one, because that is a theory chapter. You can do this by yourself. When you're done with chapter one, you complete the homework questions at the end of the chapter. That helps you to prepare for the class test and more about the class test when we're done. Right, next part. So what are we doing? We are doing um, the elements, the, the protons, the neutrons, the atoms, and everything that we start off with to end up with a component. So we start with the ball model. Now this is a typical ball model. We normally work with silicon and germanium. And the atom numbers for silicon is 14 and germanium is 32. Now, because we have the atom numbers, we can now determine how many shells we need around the nucleus. And the nucleus for silicon has got 14 protons and 14 neutrons. Now, the shells, depending on this atom number, is that will determine the amount of shells around the nucleus. Now, if we take silicon, we know 30, 14 electrons. This is your formula, Ne equals 2n squared. We can now determine how many bands are there around the nucleus. So we say 2n is the number shelf. This is the first shelf. This is the first one. Then the first shelf. Square equals two. Two times the second shell, square is eight. Now, eight and two give me 10. 10 is not enough, which means that there's gonna be another band around another shell around because we must have 14 electrons. So we determine shell three and we see that can handle 18 electrons. Will there be 18 electrons in the third shell? No, there will not. Why? Because we have an atom number of 14. We just count until we have 14. So it's 2 plus 8 plus 4 is 14. Therefore, of the 18 electrons that can be in the third shell, there will only be 4 electrons. And those four electrons in the outer band, that's the balance band, will then move and join other atoms to combine if need be. Now, outside the Bohr model, there's also a quantum model. This one is a bit more complicated and a more tricky way to draw. That's why you don't see a drawing yet. It's got P shells and it uh, orbits, and it's got S orbits or shells. Now, how do I know how many electrons are there? This is the style in which they write it down. One S squared, two S squared, two P to the power six, three S squared, three P squared. How do we interpret this? First one, shell one, shell two, shell three. That one is easy. The amount of electrons, two electrons in total in the S orbit of shell one. Shell two has got six plus two, eight electrons in total. Six of them in the P orbit, 
and two of them in the ace orbit. In the third band, in the outer band, we have now got a total of four electrons, two in the P orbit and two in the S orbit. So this is how you work with how many orbits, how many electrons you got in the shell or the orbits S and P of a quantum model. Now, if I have a piece of silicon or germanium, and I now want to start using that, 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 that silicon and germanium and work so that I can use it to form a component. So if I take a piece and I inject one piece with pentavalent um, impurities, I have five electrons at my output valence band. If I take the other piece of material and I inject it with trivalent impurities, I have three electrons in my outer shell. Now I've got a piece of A material and I've got a piece of P material. What does it mean? P material is the positive, more positive, which means there are more holes than electrons. The A material, there are more electrons than holes. Therefore, it is negative and P, more holes, more positive. Now, what happens if I just put those two pieces together like a magnet? And just like a magnet, they react to one another the P piece of material attracts all the negatives of the N and the N attracts all the holes, the positive of the P material and in the end it forms a depletion layer between the two and this is how we start making a component. We have now joined the two together we have done nothing else with them. And because we joined the two, we have a depletion layer. Nothing happens yet, just a little depletion layer because of the attraction of the negatives on this side and the holes on that side. This is the end of chapter one. This is until you write tests. You write tests about the extra notes and chapter one. I am starting with chapter two so that we can finish on time. At the, at the end of the semester. So now, in chapter two, we've now got the P material, we've got the A material, we combine them, now we must use it as a component. If we combine it, this combination here is called a diode. How does a diode work? Now, if we put a battery across the P and the N material of this diode, the diode is the P and N material with one end and two ends, and we connect a battery in between them now, and we see what is happening. If we forward bias this P and N material, we've got a positive combined to positive, the negative of the battery combined to negative, and it is FB forward bias. What is happening now? Now this positive of the battery repels all the positives of the P material. So all the holes is going to the center. This negative repels all the electrons in this negative piece towards the center. And in the center, there's a small little barrier potential, but so small that the positives and the negatives can move in between these barrier potentials and we will have a current flow through this little diode. And yeah, in the P in junction, we get a 0 0,7 voltage across this diode. And if you get any other voltage, between your P and your N with a battery connected, you know 
this little barrier potential, this barrier broke through, or it's not working anymore. It must always be 0, 0,7 volt. Okay, what will happen if I now reverse bias, if I turn the battery around? If I turn the battery around, I put my negative to positive, my positive to negative. Again, attraction. My negative attracts the positives, and all the holes will come and lie on this side. My positive will attract all the electrons in this end material, which will lie on that side. In the end, all the positives move to that side, all the negatives move to that side, and we've got a big gap here, a depletion layer, and there can be no current flow. Therefore, because of this big depletion layer, we don't have a current flow. Reverse bias. So, how does this work? Forward bias, current, reverse bias, no current. It's like a light switch. You put the light switch on, you see light. Forward bias, a diode, you will see current, just like a light switch. So this is like you close a switch. If you want to put the light off, you flip the switch. Yeah, if you turn the battery around, it's like you flip the switch. The barrier potential becomes too large for current flow. It's like an open and the diode will not work. So if you have a diode in your circuit and it doesn't work, check if it's forward bias or reverse bias. If that is not a problem, check if you get, if you forward bias it from a seven ball uh, across your PN junction. Right. How can we now draw the characteristic curve of the diode? Because what I have described here is the typical character of a diode. And we can represent this in a curve. Now I've got my I forward and reverse current. I've got my V forward and reverse bias. And I drew a line like this. What does it mean? In forward bias, we saw at 0, 0,7 volt. When I get that 0, 0,7 volt, I have current. Now, this is understandable. But now what about this? I said there's no current in the reverse bias. If you reach this point, V break through, this diode will break through, and then you will have an avalanche of current. If you get in the reverse bias, if you get a large current, you know you broke your diode. And normally if your diode breaks, you will get some smoke signals as well. And then you know it's really toast. It doesn't work anymore, use a new diode. Right. Which means that this one is the breakthrough. At the knee current, you will see it will break through and give you an avalanche of current. Otherwise, no current. You will see, no, this means it's a small, small leakage current, but it's so negligible short. A small, you can just ignore it. This is the part that you are interested in. Okay, this is how far I go with chapter two, because the next part is how do we apply the diode in circuits? So that I will carry on next week. Test one. I have many students that say they clash with physics too. There cannot be a clash. I gave you, if you look very nicely on Blackboard, you will see I give you three test dates for test one. There's various reasons for that. First, to rule out clashes, which I can now do, because if you cannot write Friday's test, you can write it on Monday or in December. You can retest test one. Then what we also picked up is 
students having problems to log in into the Blackboard tests. So, Ms. Hatchett, she'll make you a little video, what we will put on Blackboard, how to log into a test, where to go and look, where to find your test before you are writing your test one next week, Friday, so that you are familiar where to go before you write your actual test. And the other one is, if there's a power failure on one of these test dates, you have two more versions and options to go and write the test. This is to cancel out various problems that we know you encounter during your tests online. Test two and test three both got two options because most of the problems will be eliminated during test one. Test two and three test dates you have, and then in the end, the first week of December, we're doing the rewrites. I always give more than one option for students to write tests. And no, the rewrites are not more difficult. They typically the same type of questions. They are not more difficult because that is not a fair assessment. Right, do I have any questions? Now is the time to press on your microphones and ask. Right, then we are done, ladies and gentlemen. This was then a very short session, but we are done. I will place this on Blackboard and I will see you next week. Thank you and bye.